meet Kevin. He's on summer vacation and he's going trekking in the lower Himalayan ranges. It's a hot day and he has been walking for hours already. I am so thirsty. Kevin has only one small bottle of water. He needs to make it last the whole day. So he has to be careful. Like Kevin, we all need to be careful while using our natural resources. Our planet Earth offers us several resources such as forests, minerals, water and soil on which we are dependent for many of our needs. Like Kevin's bottle of water, these resources will also get depleted if we are not careful about how we use them. In this lesson, we are going to look at some natural resources, particularly forest resources, and figure out why they are important to sustain. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe how our natural resources are being depleted and why they need to be preserved. Explain the significance of forest resources. Explain the importance of sustainable development. And describe what we as individuals can do to help conserve and manage forest resources. Why do we need to use our resources carefully? Our resources are limited and the number of people who need them is increasing steadily because of the growth in global population. That is why we need to be very careful about how we use our resources. Unknowingly, we are exploiting our natural resources including our forest water, coal and petroleum reserves. For example, the river Ganges runs its course of over 2,500 kilometers from Gangotri in the Himalayas to the Bay of Bengal. In the towns and cities of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal, garbage and excreta are dumped into the river while it flows through. Largely untreated sewage is dumped into the Ganges every day. In addition, human activities like bathing, washing of clothes and immersion of ashes or unburnt corpses contribute to the pollution of the Ganges. The toxicity created in the water by these activities kills aquatic fauna. Even industries cause pollution because of the large amount of slag which is discarded as a byproduct of industries. The coliform bacteria is usually found in the human intestine whose presence in the Ganges water indicates contamination by feces and disease causing microorganisms. This graph shows the total coliform count levels in the Ganges that quantifies the pollution in units called the most probable number or MPN. To overcome the poor quality of water, in 1985 the Ganga Action Plan came into existence. Pollution of the Ganges is just one example of how our resources are being depleted. Let's join Kevin, who is trekking in the Himalayas, and talk about our forest resources. Forests are biodiversity hotspots due to the sheer number as well as the variety of species of flora and fauna that live in them. And these very forests provide us a wealth of resources. The depletion of our forest resources 
is another issue that we need to be aware of. Our dependency on forest resources varies. The people who use forest produce are called stakeholders. These stakeholders include people who live in or around forests or the villagers, the forest department of the government which, which owns the land, industrialists who use various forest produce, nature enthusiasts who lobby to conserve nature as it is, and of course, all of us, you and me, are stakeholders too. After all, these forests also belong to us. Let's take a closer look at how some of these people depend on forest resources. The people living in or near forests use the wood for fuel, bamboo to thatch their houses, and to make baskets, leaves for fodder, herbs for medicines, and fruits and nuts from forests for their food. They also let animals like sheep and cows graze in the forests. Sometimes, vast tracts of forests are converted into monocultures of pine, teak, or eucalyptus. In order to plant trees, huge areas are first cleared of vegetation. This destroys a large amount of biodiversity in the area. It is the responsibility of the forest department to manage all forest resources. They own forest land and set up rules and regulations for the use of forest resources. They also ensure that the local people and their needs are not ignored. It is also one of their duties to make people understand how to manage forests. Industries obtain raw material from forests for their factories. Forests support vital industries such as rubber, lac and sports equipment. We use the timber from trees for construction, doors and window frames and furniture. All the paper that we use also comes from trees. Nature and wildlife enthusiasts who are in no way dependent on the forests help to conserve resources. They mainly concentrate on large animals like lions, tigers, elephants and rhinoceroses. However, they now also recognize the need to preserve biodiversity as a whole. Our forest resources are limited. Indiscriminate use can deplete them to dangerously low levels. That's why the villagers try and take good care of them by using only twigs and branches from trees instead of cutting down trees, taking only what is needed, taking animals to graze in the forests. Without the animals, the grass would grow so much that new grass wouldn't get a chance to grow. Villagers make the government realize that they are also a really important part of the forest. Villagers' interests lie in conserving the forests rather than destroying them. Let's see few instances of villagers intervening for the conservation of forests. The Chipko Andolan Hug the Trees movement was the result of alienation of people from their forests. This movement originated in the 1970s in a village called Reni in Garhwal, high up in the Himalayas. There was a dispute between the local villagers and a contractor who wanted to cut trees in a forest close to the village. As the contractor's workers reached the forest, the women of the village wrapped themselves around the tree trunks, preventing the workers from cutting the trees. Thus, the contractor had to withdraw. This movement forced the government to rethink the destruction of forests 
affected not only the availability of forest products, but also the quality of the soil and the sources of water. In 1972, the West Bengal government recognized its failure in reviving the degraded Saul forests. A.K. Banerjee, a forest officer, along with the local villagers, was involved in saving over 1,200 acres of badly degraded Saul forests. The villagers helped and got incentives from the government in return. As a result of these efforts, the once worthless forests were later valued at Rs 12.5 crores. The Bishnoi community in Rajasthan conserved the forest and wildlife as a religious tenet. The government of India has recently instituted an Amrita Devi Bishnoi National Award for Wildlife Conservation in the memory of Amrita Devi Bishnoi, who in 1731 sacrificed her life along with 363 others for the protection of Khejri trees in the Khejrali village near Jodhpur in Rajasthan. Without the participation of villagers, the forests also suffer. For example, the Great Himalayan National Park contains alpine meadows which were grazed by sheep in the summer. Nomadic shepherds drove their flock up from the valleys every summer to feed their sheep. When this national park was formed, this practice was put to an end. Now, without the regular grazing by sheep, the tall grass prevents fresh growth. There's some sort of factory there. Let's go take a look. Can you see the forest land there? The factory has used up all the trees in this area. Imagine what would happen if they kept doing this and ultimately finished all the trees here. They would just move on to a different forest, I guess. That's true. But without the cover of trees, the soil in this forest would soon get eroded, leaving no more room for more trees to grow. Secondly, without the trees, wildlife dependent on the trees and forest cover would no longer survive. It's not just the number, but the variety of species of trees, plants and animals that are found in the forest that is important. It is this biodiversity that is so valuable. Losing this diversity can lead to loss of ecological stability here. And let's not forget the people who live here. If they didn't have this forest, where would they get their food and firewood from? Where would their animals graze? If this continues, there will be nothing left for future generations in this area. What's the alternative? After all, these industries that use the forests are important. We don't have to stop using forest resources, but we do need to make sure that we're giving back what we're taking away from the forests. Industries releasing hazardous waste must have a plan for the disposal of wastes. Pollutants should be minimized and wastes must be recycled. The government has made it a rule that all industries that use raw materials from a forest must have the responsibility to plant more trees than they chop. Industries must pay the government fairly for these resources so that the money can be used for development work and for the benefit of the local people. Does that mean that we all play a role in keeping the forests safe? That's right, Kevin. All stakeholders, including the industries, the government and the local people, have to work hand in hand. 
There's just so much to think about. I'm glad I came trekking here. I wonder if I would have realized all this otherwise. You're right. Sustainable development is not only about using the resources we have. It also ensures that they are equitably distributed. All stakeholders should benefit, not just the rich who control the industries or powerful government officials. All the stakeholders together help in sustainable management. The government which owns the forest land has some clear responsibilities. The government controls the industries to use the resources in limited quantities. It also has to set up rules and regulations for how these industries should operate, dispose their waste material, and so on. It has to ensure that local people are not marginalized, that they also benefit from available resources. The government has to ensure that illegal activity in forests is controlled so that the resources do not fall into the wrong hands. Industries also have a role to play in conserving our forest resources. Some important responsibilities they have include planting more trees than they use or reforesting, following all government norms to prevent pollution, developing and following ways to dispose the waste from their factories safely, and lastly, paying a fair price for the resources that they use. Even you as an individual are a stakeholder in conserving our forests. There are a lot of things you can do to help conserve our resources. You must have heard of the three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle. Use less. Switch off lights and fans when you're not in the room. Avoid wasting anything you use including food and other items of daily use. Recycle paper, plastic, glass, metal and other materials. Reuse what you can, such as plastic bags, glass and plastic jars, the reverse side of used paper and so on. Remember, all these small steps make a difference if we all follow them.